Pledge of Allegiance for the regular meeting. Um, consent agenda. Approve agenda is submitted. Receive and place on file all notice. Open Meeting Act is on the wall. Receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting and receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. Anybody want anything taken off? Mr. McLean. I move the items listed under the consent agenda be, be approved, accepted, and ratified as presented. Second. Your vote, please. And that passes. Um, as work session goes, we have no public hearings or resolutions, ordinances, or public forum. We have two discussion items. Um, the first discussion is regarding the formation of committees to review various topics. Um, we actually have a total of, my, at least my proposal is a total of, uh, I guess I would say three committees, but one is probably, when we round it out, is four. Um, and my explanation there. Um, uh, Gary Barnard and, and uh, Dave and I and Tobias have always been working with the school. I think we're going to keep that committee active um, as we move forward with that particular uh, Lincoln and 33rd Street. I think we need to make sure that A, uh, we get it done as expediently as we can, which we are behind. Um, but secondly, I think you know we also want to be very aware of the three homes that are also going to be affected by that because it's more than just the school and we have three folks there that we want to make sure we take care of them. So that committee is there. Um, the other three committees, uh, Ted is chairing up the Dempster Committee, which will be with Gary and Terry. The Ordinance uh, Committee is chaired by Gary. Uh, that'll be Dave, Tim, and Rich. That is one representative from each of the four wards, which is probably where we need to be uh, when you look at nuisances and those type of things. Um, the other thing is with the ordinance one, I think it may become somewhat of a, a standing committee that people rotate in and out as we go down through the number of our three years because I don't necessarily see that completely changing. <laughs> Who do you, Bob, who'd you have on that? I'm sorry. Gary, Dave, Tim and Rich. Thanks. And then for downtown, that's we have, you know, that's another major project. We have Terry, uh, Mike, and Dwayne. Um, my idea is, and then I'll let Tobias say anything and, and you guys visit as well. As we know, a number of these big projects are going to be very difficult to get done in our three years or three and a half years as this particular body but I think this particular body has identified these projects as something we want to see at least give a f our footprint in to make a difference. And so I guess the charge is, particularly with Dempster's and the downtown project, is to come up with a playbook that will identify what we need to do to get this thing done and get things started. You know, I think a perfect example would be you know, we know we have to buy some property with back taxes, but we know that's going to take three years once we purchase them. And so we don't, I, I guess, I don't think anybody here feels comfortable not doing anything. <laughs> and so um, that, was the, that was the motive or impetus for uh, the committees because, you know, first of all, I think everybody was interested in doing something more than just coming to meetings on Monday night. Um, and number two, I think that this allows really good input from everybody on the council. Um, I certainly, uh, I'll just tell you this up front, um, if you want me at your meetings, I'll be glad to be there. If you don't, that's okay too, because I don't want to micromanage this process. I think it's important that uh, we champion these projects uh, and we move forward. Um, there really wasn't any magic about choosing people on committees. Um, it was just kind of how things kind of shook out. And uh, with that, I guess I'll let Tobias chime in. Yeah, I, uh, I would just say, you know, we're looking forward to working with you on these committees. Um, but please understand that while all of you are on one or two committees, 
uh, administration will be on all of them. And so we may need some time just to kind of get all the information put together for you and, and keep stuff rolling for you. So, uh, but we look forward to working with you. You know, and I think one of the things we also have to, you know, I think with Gary, you know, we've, we've met at least once kind of some of the ground rules. Um, you know, the ordinance committee is probably one of those ones that's going to be a little bit of an interesting one because A, we know we need to take a look at it, and I think the first thing we're taking a look at is nuisance properties. But we also have two sides of that coin, and everybody has constitutional rights. And so we got to make sure we do the right thing there. And so, um, anyway, I'm excited. I think it's a good way to do this. I think uh, we probably haven't had these type of committees through a number of administrations. Um, and I guess I really feel very important to get everybody involved because I think everybody here brings something to the table. Yeah. On that ordinance committee, uh, we'll either Taylor or one, one of these guys will be at, mm -hmm. at that. Correct. So we can get, because on some of those nuisance problems, see if we can find teeth bigger right. than what right. we've got now. Well, and you got Chet, who most of the complaints come to. Um, so he'll be integral in that as well. Uh, so. And I'll put together some memos and stuff for you to kind of get all those things collected, kind of show you where the courts have kind of decided on things and where we can kind of make some improvements and kind of our comparisons to other towns that I've heard a lot of uh, talk about. A lot of other towns, uh, there's a lot of people who think that a lot of other towns have got some pretty good ordinances out there, so I've been taking a look at all those suggestions as well. And so um, yep. we'll get you the, that information all wrapped up in a nice tidy little box for you. And Bob, <coughs> will the committee's report back results or monthly to you or like at a, or how Yeah, I mean, I think that, yeah, I think we can do some reporting back as, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know if it's monthly. Yeah. I guess I'm hoping that each, uh, Chair will let me know that they want to have an update, and we can do that either at a work session or it can be part of the discussion item on the agenda. I was just curious. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's a question, Bob. Do you want us to, after every meeting, you want to, do you want some loose notes and send them to you so you can make that decision whether you want to share it with the rest of the council or? or? Yeah, I mean, that would be nice. Okay. Um, on the other side of the coin, you know, I, I fully trust the committees that are sure. in place. I, so. I just don't, I but just yeah. didn't want to get it yeah. you know, three miles down the road and, and have, say, hey, um, yeah. Yeah. by the way, we've kind of made and, these decisions. So, and, I, and, I, and you know, that would be good. I mean, because, you know, if there's some progress being made, but it's not maybe worthy of a meeting, we can at least do a summary Yeah. and pass that out at every I, meeting. I just didn't want you to drive by Dempster's one day and have noticed that somebody was tearing it down and you'd give me a call and say, what's going on there? No, I'd so, say, just, hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Get that done, Ted. Yeah. Well, and any of the decisions that are going to be made as a result of those two will come back to the full body. Sure. So. Yeah. And Bob, you don't, it's probably redundant, but you don't care if we pull in somebody else if, well, you know, some, if there's a, another councilman or somebody that we need to have it at some meeting, pull them in to because they're an expertise in some little area. That I we think need to you talk can about. always pull somebody in that I would call as a resource. Um, yep. If I look at your project, you probably have Michael Southen, um, who may have some influence on the committee as well and some yep. ideas. So I guess I would say that, first of all, we've got to make sure we don't violate open meetings law. And secondly, I think, you know, um, think about your resource and what they can add to your committee for any of the committees. Um, a a one-time visit resource person can be very valuable. Uh, that's one of the things in my previous life we would do when we had committee work, or in this case, they called them teams, but I like committee better. Yep. <laughs> All right, and again, let me know if you want me to attend. Um, I'll give as much support as, as I can. Um, now that I've returned grandkids to parents and back from the lake yeah i'm back in a little better position than i was last week not in back in shape yet though <laughs> come with me i got pt huh they'll get you in shape <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay if there is nothing on that the next item for discussion 
is a discussion on recycling. Um, I think this came about from one of the discussions we had at our agenda meetings. Um, I think you know it's important to kind of share where we're at with recycling, what options we actually have, um, because I think it's been a long time since we've talked about that. Yeah, so Jason, Carrie, you guys want to come up and talk about recycling and, and introduce yourselves here? I'm sure most everybody probably knows you, but. I'm Carrie McRary. <laughs> more okay so I have some information I, I gathered together about the recycling program and so I'm just gonna go from start to finish on the operation of it and just how things work on a day-to-day -day basis so you can understand how we how that program works so we have a recycling drop-off center at 3rd and Ella Street which is on the west side of the City Auditorium. That location has two trailers that collects cardboard, paper, tin cans, aluminum cans, and plastics. And then we have two roll-offs every day there that collects the corrugated cardboard. All of those trailers get serviced every day, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, we have a third roll-off that is there to collect recycled um, corrugated cardboard every weekend. So we have a part-time person that works 29 hours a week, and um, he is the one that primarily services those trailers. Um, he takes them down to 11th and Caldwell, unloads them, processes it, ready for the semi to pick it up, which comes about two times a week for those items. Cardboard's a little bit different. So that's the general generally how that works. We also have curbside recycling that gets picked up every day of the week. If you get garbage picked up on Monday, your recycling gets picked up on the same day with a our independent um, contractor that we have that picks that up with his truck and trailer. Um, he brings it to the recycling center and our part-time guy empties those totes for him and puts them in larger totes so they're ready to go for the semi. Um, so who owns the semi that's coming? Is that another contractor? It is a recycling company. First Star Recycling out of Lincoln comes and picks up all the mixed recyclables except the cardboard, the corrugated cardboard. And so they come twice, about twice a week. Okay. And then the cardboard comes about twice a month, two to three times a month, and they are out of Illinois, but the cardboard, I think, goes south. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, every time they pick it up. But it's Quincy out of Illinois. Um, we also have trailers that we pick up in Dakin, Pickerel, Philly. Western. Western. Plymouth, uh, Plymouth, yeah, of course. And then we also have recyclables that come up from Dillard. They bring the recyclables up to us. So they come about six times, every six weeks, I mean, is when Diller comes. Since they're not a Mars customer, they are charged for us servicing that. But anyone that's a Mars customer, Pickerel, Plymouth, Western, um, they, we all go and get their containers and bring it back and service it for them. Um, we also have a few others that have their own, like Tri-County School or the Homestead National Monument. They have their own trailers, and they bring those to us, and then we service them whenever they call. Card cardboard's your biggest animal? Card. The most that we take in. Volume? I suppose. We bring in, on a Monday, we'll bail about 3,600 pounds of cardboard on a Monday, two to three 1,200 pound bales. On a Tuesday through Friday, we'll bale one. So plastics, uh, generally every Thursday and about every other week, we have it. So every other week we get picked up twice a week, and then we get every Thursday we get a trailer that comes to us, a closed 53 foot trailer. Uh, those trailers, when they come down, 
They'll generally have it at, uh, and, and I know we'll get into prices, but our price that we get charged is $98.50 per ton. Generally, I'm at about 1.24 tons on every truckload. Uh, the plastic at the, at the drop-off site here always seems to be full. Do we get paid for the casing for them? Do we receive any money for plastic. cardboard, plastic, Car or anything? Cardboard, we, cardboard, cardboard has highs and lows. Right now it's a low. Um, we, plastic, we pay for the plastic every single, every single load. Plus I get charged, uh, give or take, let's say about $140. That's for them to come down. That's what the 98.50 a ton amounts to. And then we get charged $350 for every semi that they come down. They'll come down. They'll drop their trailer. They'll pull hook up to our trailer. They'll pull it away from the dock. That's, that's full. They'll put the empty trailer in place, and then they'll unhook, hook up to the full one, and head back to Lincoln. So, and that's every Thursday we get a truck, and then every other week we get two trucks. Now there are some weeks where we may we may go we may go two trucks every single week, depending on course holidays or and I don't know it's just weird once in a while we'll we'll run into a spot where I'll have two trucks for three weeks in a row it's just it's it's just kind of I don't necessarily want to say it's a holiday it just kind of there's ebbs and flows on it so but the cardboard I've seen the cardboard as high as 205 a ton um, where the the companies will literally be emailing me saying hey can we send you a truck uh, I've seen it at $20 a ton when I had run out of places to store cardboard. Uh, we had bales, there's a, there's a 40 by 30 uh, pull shed at Mars. I had it stacked clear to the trusses. Uh, we, had, we have a recycling area in Mars that I had all of our plastic containers for storage outside and I had the cardboard inside stacked up to where every corner we had a full and then we were going out to Boswa and I took all of the equipment that doesn't get used daily out and we took probably a 40 by 30 maybe even a 40 by 60 area in there that we were stockpiling bales out there at Boswell because the trucking companies would not come and get it because it was so so low low they weren't they weren't going to come and get it for twenty dollars a ton has it improved right now I'm getting thirty five dollars a ton out of Quincy which is in Illinois uh, before um, First Star, which again is out of Lincoln, uh, they were coming there like North 56, they're south of the interstate. Uh, they were coming and they were getting our material from us, and they would also get my cardboard. Uh, they were the ones that were like, I'm, I'm down to 20, 25 dollars a ton, I, you know, and we're, we're not going to come get it for that. And uh, we would get, to, we got to the point where I, I was stacking <coughs> cardboard outside in the rain because we had no more places to put it, and, and I was calling them and they're like we'll come get one truck but what we're going to do is we're going to take your cardboard we're going to charge you for the load and then we'll bring it up here and we'll stockpile at our location and then they weren't going to pay me for the cardboard more or less it was just them taking it so that they could knew that they knew they had storage this i did get an email today it was it's up to 45. 45 now for quincy yeah. so. um, but you've I, gotten rid of all that stockpiling oh yes as soon as i went over to the new company out of illinois um, and I found out that they were at like 30 or 35 at the time. I scheduled five semi loads in one one month. Tobias, have you kept is, have you kept track over a period of time of what this costs us or what we make or what we don't make on this stuff? Yeah, like the uh, Carrie has those numbers here. I'm sure she's going to get to them here shortly. Pardon me. Carrie's going to get to those numbers here in just a minute. Oh. Stuff here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we kind of talked about the. Unless you want me to get right to that part. The last page um, I have here is basically the cost of um, what it costs per month. But I can tell you it's $8.50 a month for each residential customer that they pay um, on their Board of Public Works bill. Right, with the tote that we have sitting back there. That's what's included in that. Some people have these smaller square totes that were previously used and they're still using those. So that, um, and then we also have the commercial customers as well, which is $15 for a commercial customer. And then we have different rates for cardboard, commercial, um, 
It depends on the size of the dumpster and the number of times a week. A week that we come to pick it up, it's anywhere from $35 to $100 a month. And so, but the total cost is um, $11,003 per month is the approximate cost. It costs about $2,302 per month for our part-time staff. The independent contractor is $4,560 a month. It comes out to about $1,140 per week for all of his expenses, including mileage. The mileage that we put on our um, pickup that we use to transport the trailers is $520 a month. Um, random, like bailing wire, costs us $250 a month for the cardboard. Just um, what we spend uh, time hauling our cardboard roll offs is $660 a month. Um, and let's see, the mileage is $65. The rear loaders that we have that go around to the commercial customers to pick that up is 46 a month. And we pay First Star out of Lincoln $2,600 a month about, which is a question that you had on what we're paying. That's what we pay Lincoln um, approximately every month to take our mixed recycling there that doesn't include the cardboard. So that's how I got to the $11,003. And then our income, I have it divided out. Our residential in town and rural comes income comes to two thousand five hundred sixteen. Commercial cardboard income is um, four thousand four hundred thirty. Commercial recycling, which is the fifteen dollars a month, where the contractor goes and picks that up from their business every week, is six hundred and sixty, which brings us to seven hundred and six dollars. Six hundred and six dollars. I'm sorry, seven thousand six oh six for our income which then gives us a loss of 3,397 or roughly $3,400 a month. So that's where, we, where we're at right now. And I have the numbers of the number of total customers we have. We have 47 um, commercial customers, about 275 city, um, city Recycling in the residential area is 21 rural, which brings us to about 300 that we have total. Do you know roughly how many total citizens you service in your garbage area? Beatrice is 12,500. You mm -hmm. do you know I'll, roughly? I'll yeah. give, or, give, or, give or take numbers. It's like 100. And, it's about 200 for Plymouth. It's Hundred give or take for, for pickerel. Yes, hundred for pickerel. Phillies, I think around seventy six and. Dick and Western together is about hundred and fifty, like eighty something and seventy something. And then all the rural people as well. And all the rural people together, yeah, we had that number a long time. I just didn't know. Think of a percentage of how many people take recycling, the curbside recycling. Very small amount. Very small. If you're looking at two hundred seventy five customers just in Beatrice, and. <clears throat> Well, and the other villages have their trailers, but I know we don't. I know we go to uh, we go to Western about once a month. We go to Pickerel every three weeks. Yeah, we go to Pickerel and Plymouth, yeah. and then Philly is the same. We go and pick up their trailer. So I have them scheduled about every three weeks, which is about the right amount of time in between each service. And then Diller brings theirs to us about every six weeks. We get the co-op. Out west or east at 4136. We've dropped them off a, a roll off, is what we do. Uh, That's all 10, plastics. 20, yeah, 20, 20 for 20. their plastics. And then we just recently, last week, delivered one to Odell to that co op for plastics. And we get a lot of cardboard from some industrial, you know, in town, some businesses in town as well. Some of them it's, it's bailed already. And they. Yeah, Kuma. Will give us bail. A lot of times with the Kuma bales, um, we have to break the bales apart. The the bales, well, their baler is not big enough, and it doesn't. Put, and it and so when it does it, it it'll put it down, and they don't put enough bales straps, a wire on it. So we, if we get it and we mess with it, it's, it's literally a grenade. If you if you touch it just the wrong way, she pops. And so we end up getting it, and we've just found that it's best to just break it apart. And rebail it and put our straps. They put four straps, we put six wires. It probably goes without saying, but 
all these surrounding communities we at least break even with, right? Or make some money? With uh, recycling? With whatever we're with whatever we're picking up from them, we're, if you if you count the garbage that we're picking up from them, we're going to make money when they only bring it into us every three weeks, you know. And their trailers, one trailer, similar to what we have down here, so it really isn't. They're not really bringing in that much to us if you figure a trailer every three weeks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned about how much they bring in unless it get, gets our landfill going crazy, but but. We should be at least making a buck there for offering that service, I would think. From however often they're, we're going to get their recycling or their regular garbage. Hopefully, we're charging enough to do that. Well, and I think with the garbage prices coming up every year, we raise the prices on the villages every every year. We raise prices. Okay. And so, recycling has been a, if you will, maybe a piece of cheese, um, because a lot of villages don't have that service. And the other carriers don't provide that service. Yep, with you. So. And this thirty-three hundred ninety-seven dollars, I presume that goes up and down then, depending on what these things are selling for, carbon and whatever. That's yeah. forty thousand dollars a year yep. that this program is costing us. Yeah. We have we almost forty-one thousand. We've seen the bales at two hundred five. Uh, this last summer they were not that high. The first summer of Mars' creation, they were running about 205, 210. Um, and that's, that's when we were making good money uh, on a load. You know, uh, we were putting off uh, 20 tons. Every truckload was going out the door of cardboard, uh, you know, and, and we were doing okay then. So, but is right it, now, nobody wants it. Is cardboard trending down then? Right now, it's it. Well, what'd you 45. Think? 45. What, what drives that market? What? Um, I don't know where the cardboard goes to. I know where the plastic goes, but I don't know what affects our cardboard so much. Is there just goes. more of it being done, so the market's yeah. just getting oversaturated? Yeah, and one thing you have to one thing that one thing you have to remember is plastic is plastic's funny too. You think, well, I throw plastic, I recycle plastic. Well, there's there's different grades of HDPE, which is high density polyethylene, and there's so so you're going to get a price a water bottle that you a water bottle that is that's a low grade plastic that's very very cheap plastic when i recycle that i have to have a tremendous amount of it water water or pardon me, milk jugs are another price um, colored plastic is another price uh, and so you have to everything gets broke down cardboard's no different um, you open up your box of cereal in the morning, that's, that is a colored cardboard. <clears throat> it's, it is a lesser grade. They, they don't like it as much. Um, plastic coated corrugated cardboard, that's, a, that's almost a sin. They don't like that plastic on that cardboard at all to the point where if, we're, if, if they'll look at a bale and if they think it's more than 2% plastic in a bale, they'll actually make me pay for that bale. So two percent is what they they say is their number that they will they'll reject the bale. Kind of like the wax boxes that, exactly. fruit, that fruit comes in. That's exactly that's wax yeah. or at wax colored they'll take. It's just it's a different again like plastic. There's different qualities of different uh, different grades of cardboard. Yeah. How many tons of garbage do we take out to the every month? Garbage itself? Are we taking? Well, we had those numbers. I know the landfill takes in about 31,000 tons. If you take out Seneca's, about 10,000 tons. <coughs> um, and you're going to take out the other villages out of that. Where, where are we? Seven to ten? Somewhere in there, I think. Seven to ten thousand is what the city of Beatrice takes out. Um, I'm, I'm in the comment, and I'm sorry I stepped on you, Terry, but uh, the 40,700. Sixty-four dollars a year is what this program is costing us. Is there any way that you can think of that we could offset that just a little bit? Well, honestly, we were. You know, we were all. We were all. Well, some of us was on board for this program, but uh, uh, this is starting to get costly. It's the right thing to do. Well, I don't think it's a lot. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, which I really don't. I don't think forty thousand dollars a year to keep that much stuff out of the landfill. Is is a lot. I, I really don't. I, I mean, 
we're a society that is, that is being taught daily to recycle, recycle, recycle. Now, granted, it, it probably does cost us, but I bet it costs every other city in the state to do it too. But I just think it's the right thing to do. Now, if, is, like Terry said, we might have to raise our prices on some of these things. That's a bargain at $8.50 a month. You don't separate it. You just throw it in the can, and it picks it up once a week. At least from a guy that's been separating on himself and hauling it down there two and three times a week, that's a bargain. You know, I, I for one, just love it. I mean, what more could you want from a normal household? Go out and throw it in there, take it to the curb. That's it. You know, one thing I look at, guys, uh, we, we had to open up cell one of the landfill in 2016 for us to tie the new cell five. It's, uh, it's when we had our cell five, which is between the old landfill and the new landfill. When we did that, we dug down, we lined over the top of the old, and we anchored it in. We came down through the bottom, across the bottom, and we went up into what is the very first cell of the new landfill. You have the pre-subtitle D, which is lesser restrictions, and then you have your more of your more stiffer. I, yeah, 89 to 94 is kind of when we shifted away from and into the new. Um, when they do that, they take and they expose the liner on cell one, and they weld the plastic, the HDPE together so that there's no seam for any uh, seepage. When they did that, we exposed garbage that had been in there since 1994. Uh, I, I looked at some of the material that's there, and we exposed a lot of garbage, a lot. Uh, we exposed appliances that had been in there at the time and whatnot through this trench that is roughly 600 feet long. Um, and, and of everything that we've seen in there, we've seen fires, <coughs> some metal cans, appliances, whatnot. One thing we didn't see, we didn't see cardboard. Cardboard, cardboard is a cellulose. It gets wet. You guys have all seen it. It gets wet, and that stuff gets slimy, and it breaks down fairly quickly. Um, you know, it's funny because cardboard is the one that everybody worries about in the landfill, and cardboard is the one that dissolves so fast. Right now, our landfill has settled 20 feet on the north side of the landfill. 20 feet of settling. Yeah, this is evolving, and, but that's one of the reasons that they don't take with the wax boxes the plastic on them, because when they break these down, they use water to do it, and that's why, that's why they throw that out. If you've ever seen the, the process, it's... You can you can Google it, look it on YouTube, but it's it's pretty, yeah. yeah. Well, my point was maybe we ought to look at the rates to help offset this a little bit. What about uh, maybe they what are about glass? Glass is glass is a there's. I would have to have uh, ten tons of glass in order to get uh, forty dollars for ten tons of glass, and that's the, and so. For us to take in 10 tons of glass, um, glass is, again, it's hollow. Again, it, it, it is, it, it's in a, it, your shapes, your take space. Um, I would have to have the location, the area that it would take one dump truck of glass. Uh, I could take my 14-yard dump truck from the street. We could fill it full of glass, take it out there. It most likely wouldn't be a ton. Most likely wouldn't be close to a ton of glass when you think of 2,000 pounds. And then for me to get forty dollars for ten tons of capacity or space taken, uh, it just doesn't add up. No, so we decided glass was a was a was a no for us. Um, there are some companies out there that will pulverize their glass and they will dump it on landfill roads into the rock. Um, they get, of course, they'll get permits for that, and they'll add it to their their rock roads. Um, but again, you're you're talking an, a massive expense to, yeah. to, in order to break that stuff down small enough that you can add it to your roads. Or um, there are other projects out there that I've seen broken, you know, crushed glass. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, glass is there's just no market for glass whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we've looked at glass a couple times. I know Carrie's looked at it once. I've looked at it a couple times. Uh, you have to store it, which means you have, again you have to have a location for it. Uh, then you have to provide the loader when the truck shows up. <laughs> you have to load everything up, and then, like I said, you get not much or when it's hauled away. So economically, it just that one really didn't pan out. You guys, when when we get complaints, can you do they, are they in a category, or can you are they just all over the board, or what do people 
complain about with this service when they complain? Um, well, I haven't heard a lot of complaints about the center not being open, that the drive through center, everybody's used to putting it in the trailers, but sometimes I get a few calls about it being hard for people to put it into the trailer. And so that I would say that's the biggest concern of people that it's harder for them to get it in the trailer. That's the main complaint. Anything re residential complaints? Uh, as far as curbside goes, mm -hmm. no. Yep, that's what I thought. You know, the one complaint that we have is is um, our cardboard roll offs. Sixty yards is what we put down there. Sixty yards of capacity. And a lot of times that cardboard is full by noon. Yeah. Um, we continue to have private businesses, commercial, that will blow up our dump, our roll off down there. We've seen it. We've got pictures of them. We know exactly who they are. We've we've sent letters to them before stating that they are in violation. And it does not stop them. What do they what do they say? They just keep doing it? Oh yeah. Still to the day. I I can go down there any day and I can tell you the same contractor that's gonna bring his covered his covered truck stacked full of cardboard down there and he will throw it in there every single time. What's the pen what's the penalty for doing that? If they are or they're violating the ordinance. Well, I don't think there's an ordinance. That might have to go on your agenda now. Yeah. Well, that's for the new ordinance. We we have have a, our agenda. You're on that board. <laughs> you got your first line of business. I think like the first <laughs> We know we have contractors that are doing it. We know we have. Um, Thousand dollar fine. Let's slow them down. We have. Uh, we have a lot of contractors. We know who they are. Again, we've sent letters to them. They just ignore it. <laughs> Well, and that thing, like you said, it's got cameras down there, too, doesn't it? That's how they know. The cameras that are down probably there need some better cameras. Yes. That's probably something we could work on. There you go. So, are we the I mean, at one point in time, I know BSDC had cardboard pickup, mm -hmm. which took a little pressure off, I'm sure. But I don't think they're doing that anymore, are they? BSDC has never brought their, they don't bring their material to us. But are they still are they still doing that pickup program? No. Okay. No, we've tried to partner with them. We tried to partner with Mosaic. Uh, COVID ended a lot of those programs I, that's for them. I wondered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, with staffing issues. Now, the SDC wanted to do it, but the state put a coyote to it. They said no. Okay. They want to have supervisors that were there. No supervisors. Yeah. So, uh, yes, sir. Do, with the prices that we charge, mm -hmm. have have we done any comparison to other towns around the state? Around the state, I, I don't believe so. And, and, and Beatrice is in a very funny predicament because we're the, we're the smallest big city and, and yet the biggest small city. And so it's one of those where trying to find where is too much and what is not enough um, with what we are, I think, is, is, a, is tough for us right now. Um, you know, I'm, I, I don't know how much more you're going to be able to raise it when we only have 274 people residential in Beatrice that that are willing to pay for the service. How, how much are you gonna be able to go up before you start going down on the other end and people just start bringing their containers in and dumping it down below? Um, you know, we, we've, got those, we've got those roll offs down there and, and again, uh, it's easy. Uh, the trailers, the, the, the lids have to stay with the straps on them so that they don't blow open. Um, we know that, again, there's very little recycling going on around the area. Again, the, the places that have it are, in fact, places that I believe Boswell did a grant back in about 94, I want to say. Uh, Ted, you? I, I was here. I don't yeah, remember. I understand. Uh, Odell got a trailer. Barnston got a trailer. Some these small villages oh, got trailers. Was that those Dempster trailers that yes. they got? Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that. The and Alley Cat. mid ninety somewhere in there, there yeah. was a grant. And some of these villages still have their trailers. Yeah. Some don't. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, I know that the other providers, I know the other providers around, it's a good thing for us to have. Because the other carriers don't provide recycling. Right. So is are there some marketing opportunities that we might have? Because I don't know if we've talked about recycling for a while. You and know, I wonder if there's some other either, you know, through social media and, and whatnot, is there some ways that we can maybe try to reach out and entice more people with I mean, you know, what it brings up, I know that 
you know, like Dave, I'll use him as an example, wasn't really aware of the blue uh, container over there. No, I thought, and, I thought everybody was still using the little tubs. And so I just wonder if that would help us because even if we get the price the same, but we get another 200 customers, we're in a lot better spot. Mm -hmm. Mike, yeah. It's, it's uh, work bound, but it's, it's, it's a, a push it. We've really got to get it out there. And So if you, you're at 850 on these guys, mm -hmm. so if you give them a discount on their, everybody's mandatory. If you give them a discount on their, city uh, on your trash let's say you 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 raise this to 10 bucks a month and you give them a two dollar discount on their garbage that they're that they're that everybody has to pay does that does that incentive bring it up I, and, and make it mandatory for every every citizen of Gatchers, i would the money i, I, would I, I didn't pick up the recycling would be mandatory the cycling would still be voluntary Three. Right. We're managed, yeah, still voluntary on the recycling, okay. but but you would raise it to ten dollars, and you'd give them a two dollar break on mm -hmm. just raw numbers, and I'm just yeah, guessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to make certain we weren't talking mandatory recycling. I I don't think you can, get, and it's not mandatory; it's citywide. Jason. So it's comprehensive. City, okay, citywide recycling. I, I just want to make sure it's citywide garbage pickup. Right. It's yeah, not exactly, mandatory; it's exactly. citywide. Because uh, if we were to do that, we would have to hire another employee that would then. Because, well, I was here then, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be another. We probably have to look at a couple of employees because if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it citywide at recycling, okay. then you're going to have to tote it every single home. And if you have to think about right now, that takes two of my employees yeah. every single day of the week with a side loader. Uh, we would have to give them larger totes, and we would have to go out and pick it up. So you'd have you'd have two more trucks expense, and you'd have two more employees expense with benefits if we were to do it citywide. And you'd have a room full of irate citizens because you're making it mandatory recycling. And I would probably be one of them sitting out there. And so... Along we, with the mayor. Yes. And, and we just need to sit down and probably look. I know there are other places that are considerably larger than Beatrice. Their only way their recycling program is sustained is because of grants. Uh, I went through the one in Grand Island, and, and they had workers that were... It was a processing. It was an assembly line. It came in and, and they had gentlemen with forklift would come in and they would set a container down and it would be clear full of colored plastics, clear pla whatever, clear milk jugs. It'd be, and, 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 it, and they dumped it onto a, an assembler, a conveyor belt, and they picked out what, what was theirs. And in today's job market, we would not have anybody apply for that position, not one. And so, and again, they were funded by grants, which make it very difficult. Uh, when you know, Carrie knows, when you come from a grant-based, uh, solely funded, that makes it very difficult. Yeah. Uh, but, but, there are. We looked at different ways. Uh, when the cardboard went and bottomed out and I ran out of places, I started looking for places to unload cardboard. Uh, we found Quincy in Illinois. Uh, I, they, they drove out. They met with me. We talked about it a little bit. They looked at what we had. Um, they seemed they didn't want anything from me other than my cardboard. And so we went to them because we knew it was going to make more money. And, and, and let's face it, I mean, Mars's position is a company. I, I, we have to be there. I mean, that's what we have to do. We, we have to find ways to make money. Uh, it's, it's unlike any other department that the city has. Do you have any uh, restrictions on the plastic, you know, like number one, two, three, four, like that? No. It's okay. too hard right now to have people keep it separate. If I were to tell people the grade one, two, three, four of HDPE, yeah. you'd have people freaking out. How much is it keeping out of the landfill a month? Well, we have about three semis, two to three semis a month, and it's about it's one point three tons yeah. per semi. Yeah, so forty. And if you figure it right now at what we charge at $47 per ton is what we charge for garbage at the landfill. You're looking at those seven to, let's just say, let's say the high side, say Beatrice is 10,000 10, know, that we take in in a year. If you were to figure the math and say that we do 1.4 tons per week is what my recycling is, that's about, what, 60 something, 60, 65-ish uh, dollars a ton in plastic that would go into the landfill. So uh, it would be a, if you'd want to look at it that way, it would be a tremendous cost savings to put it in the lab. And that's just plastic. And that's the just plastic. The cardboard is 
per so load is you're putting a price on the concept mm -hmm. and the process. What are we willing to pay to do the right thing, in my mind, and I think in a lot of other people's minds, too? Yeah, you'd be looking at us. The plastic could be at about between 60 and $70 a week in is what it would cost me to put that plastic in the landfill. Mm -hmm. And you'd be looking at anywhere from, let's just say 70 on the high side. And the cardboard again, I run about one ton every three weeks. So you're looking at 20, if you divide that by three tons, you're still looking at six tons a week of cardboard. Uh, six tons by 47, you're looking at about $250. It cost me to put the cardboard in the landfill. Again, real close to approximate numbers. So, Price-wise, it's definitely cheaper for us to put it in the landfill, but it's also something to where, it, looking looking at it, and I see it from a unique uh, side of things, running the landfill and running running Mars, uh, I would, to me, I think plastic should stay out of the landfill. I think plastic, plastic's never going to break down, ever, ever going to break down. I think, in my opinion, cardboard should go in the landfill because cardboard is going to dissolve and be gone inside of a couple of years. So, I think we put too much thought into the cardboard side of things, and and too much into that. When we know that that cardboard is again, it's it's going to be gone, and so you're we're, we're really you're you're paying to keep something out of the landfill that's going to dissolve anyways. Uh, plastic isn't. Um, if we're going to keep something out of the landfill, keep out keep Walmart bags out, plastic bags. Um, we get, you know, in the spring, early spring, when those winds are 45, 50 mile an hour, and I've got Walmart bags that are blowing in the air 200, 300 feet, and they're drifting on to Lenz and Myers Field or the bus field, and I'm not talking one or two, I'm talking, you know, a hundred that are over time, that I end up having a, an employee go out there every other day to just take the UTV and drive through the fields and pick up plastic bags. So. Plastic is something. If you're going to re if you're going to recycle something, boy, that's that's the way to go. If we had everybody, you know, uh, recycling, I mean, would your cost be able to come down on when you're selling this? If if everybody in town, you know, was recycling, if you were to make it a citywide recycling program, our cost would do nothing but go up. Right. Okay, because the reason I was asking, you know, you know, I lived in Kearney for a while, and our recycling collection was free. We had the same size containers we have trash, mm -hmm. and it did not cost us anything. In fact, I put more in recycling bin than I did in my trash, but it was it did not cost us anything for they that. And, and they, they had gla and they'd have glass and everything else. In that. That's why it's just that's why I asked about the glass, you know, because you know obviously we don't want to lose money, you know. But I was just wondering if everybody was recycling, I, you know, just trying to figure out how Carney could do this. I mean, they got a lot more people. Well, they're, 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 they're grant funded. Grand Island and Carney are the same way. They were 100 percent. I, I, we seen, I seen the storage buildings. They had, uh, they had buildings, I want to say they were like 60 by 200. Yes. And they were to the ceiling with cardboard bales at one time because the price was so low. And for him, he again, and something similar to, you know, a banker, I'm going to bring it in as much as possible and I'm going to let it go when the price goes up. Well, if you have the storage and capacity for that, wonderful. You know, and, and we do to an extent. We do. We keep it as much as I can to wait for the price. But, um, but yeah, that's there. They were grant funded again. They, okay. that's how, I mean, that's how they were able to do it for free. Okay. Yeah. And it was a great program. Sure. And, you know, they, like I say, they did have a great, you know, big building. And they also, you know, uh, had a lot of, uh, mentally challenged, you know, oh, yes. people working there, and you know that was great jobs for them, you know. And we looked into that a couple of years ago. We looked at the three uh, Mosaic State Home, maybe, maybe ESU, but I know Mosaic and State Home. We talked to the, those two organizations here two years ago, three years ago. We talked to them about it, and we just the liability wasn't was too much. Okay. Um, but uh, and one other thing to think about: if we were to increase the amount of capacity to what we have at the current location at the bottom over here at Clarendon. Right now, my employee is a, he is a part-time employee, which means he can only work 29 hours a week. Right now, what we take in is his maximum 29 hours a week. Um, if we were to increase too much, he can do it one day after a holiday. Or he can do it for Thanksgiving. He can pick it up. He can pick that that uh, 
that Wednesday he can pick up the Thursday and that Monday he can pick up the Friday and whatnot there. We can do that. But any more to where we're picking up, if we're picking up three roll-offs every day and three trailers every day, along with the other material that's coming into us, we would have to look at his hours because he, he would not be able to get that done in 29 hours in a week. By the time, because what we're also bringing in is we're also bringing those two roll-offs of bales of cardboard come in, get dumped on the floor every single morning, as well as what the kid, bring, what Schmally brings in to us. And so we're taking that all in, plus the trailers are coming in. And then every Monday and every Wednesday, the rear loaders go out and they pick up the commercial cardboard. So those come in on those days also. So by the time you take all of that in, he's pushed at 29 hours. So any more than that, then I go full time, and then I have benefits involved in one more employee. So twenty nine at. What do we pay him? We pay him. It's got to be it's about. A, which the contractor? No, uh, Sean. It's about twenty three oh two a month. Yeah. So I was trying to think of his hourly wage. I knew he was at the minimum. And Very beneficial, day. Bob. Thank you. What's that? Very beneficial. Yes. Thank you very much. You know, I'm still mulling around Ted's idea, not making it necessarily mandatory, but also throwing a carrot out there where you offer a $2 discount to try to build something up there. So anyway, um, thank you guys very, very much. Um, Carrie got all the numbers. She did a really good job with this. Absolutely. Good, good information. Yeah, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll hey, Mayor. Mayor. Yeah. The, um, I don't really know if this came from a meeting that we had months ago or if you guys just decided or whatever, but uh, thank you for putting these department heads in front of us, okay? The, maybe you guys have been here for a while, have had this a few times, but I sure as hell haven't, and I've learned a lot from these guys coming, so I appreciate the time you had and their time too. I'd like to take credit for that, but I think we started that... Uh... Four years ago? Yeah, we did understand it. Good. Yeah, so it's, it was I think, very, I think beneficial. It's very beneficial to do yep. every time we get four new council yep. members. So. Okay, um, that brings us to the end. We'll have our city council meeting at 7. Our next regular city council meeting will be July 3rd, 2023, at 7 p.m., right here. Mr. McLean. I move the meeting be adjourned at 6 52 p.m. Second. In favor? And that passes 8-0. Thank you.